And we're back with the Asheville View, and we're here today with our friend Tina from Blue Ridge Pride. Hi. Hey, hey guys, how are you? Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. We are so excited to have you here to, uh, first of all, tell us all about Blue Ridge Pride. It's one of my favorite festivals. Tell us all about it. So uh, it's every year it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, we've got the whole park. We have two stages. Um, we expect about 14,000 people. Wow. Wow. We have um, 180 different booths with vendors, churches, activists, uh, healthcare organizations. It's, um, we, people usually tell me to lead with all the musicians, mm -hmm. but to me the cool part is that where else can you sit there and uh, shop for merchandise, talk politics, get health care while you're listening to some, some of the best music in Western North Carolina and just all, all day long. And some of the best makeup, right? Because the drag is the bomb. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, we have, um, we actually have some new features for the drag show. We've, we've increased it because people just love that. They eat it up. Right. We're actually closing out the festival this year with a youth drag show. Nice. So, oh, wow. um, nice. yeah, uh, but we've got, um, uh, um, AD Gonzalez, the ADH project is, mm -hmm. is one of the bands. Uh, it's kind of a cross between Carlos Santana and, and Stevie Wonder. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Uh, yeah. Ryan R&B Barber, mm -hmm. uh, who kind of uh, gospel fusion and um, and R&B. Mm -hmm. But um, and then a lot of local artists, uh, Modern Strangers, who just won uh, the number two uh, band in Western North Carolina. Wow. So a lot of great entertainment. Uh, but the my favorite part, last year we added a new feature, which is the, the welcoming Western North Carolina procession. And let me just give you each. Woo! Yeah. 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 Can I put this uh, on? This is, yeah, can we? Oh, wait, I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to put I'm gonna put mine on. I gotta put mine on because I have to be cute in my, my swag, y'all. There you go. <laughs> Thank it, you it, it so much. It matches any color makeup. Right? Yeah. It matches uh, everything. Like, you got see? it? Mm -hmm. but, but so we were, we were um, festival people want to have fun. So you, you can't make it too serious, but we really wanted to give it purpose. And we keep hearing from all the haters in mm -hmm. the news. And we said, what if we just got all of Asheville out there uh, talking about how we aspire? We are not there yet. I want to be clear, but we have the vast majority of people I run into in West North Carolina aspire to having diversity, equity, and mm -hmm. inclusion. And what if we just had them come out and give voice and, and give WLOS and other media this big picture of, mm -hmm. of this whole town? And it was so popular last year, so we're doing it again this year. We start that at, at 10 o'clock over near Scandals, mm -hmm. and then we march or walk 0.6 miles, so it's not too far. Uh -huh. It's free. There are no floats because we wanted this to be about the people. Okay. And the organizations. Uh, and we encourage them to wear their logos and banners. And we march into the park. And this year we're going to do a whole cakewalk. We've added a half hour for that because everyone wants to cheer all the, the right. groups. Uh, but so we've got that. Then Festival Week, we've, we've got Movies and Mixer, which is a new series we've, we've begun. Um, We've got a, a fundraiser for the Aura Home mm -hmm. uh, for women veterans. We've uh, got a story slam right here in the block off Biltmore, Friday night, the night before the festival. Oh, wow. We'll have a LGBTQ story slam, uh, which we're really excited. These are all new things we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're also doing Youth Outright and PFLAG in Asheville. Um, we're lending them our space in the park for a picnic in the park Friday night. Um, Windcap is holding a movie um, the week before. Um, then LGBTQ Elder Advocates, they're holding a senior prom, uh, slightly different. So we're going Love away that. from Pride Festival and going into Blue Ridge Pride Week, mm -hmm. right? Right, yes. And I just want to like interrupt and say, we will definitely be in the place to be, we'll be in the procession, we'll be We'll be yes. there and we'll be fierce and it'll be fun. So yep. come hang out with us. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the date of? The, the date festival of the is the 28th. And the week is the week prior? Well, it starts the week prior, but it's been growing. Uh, we have a new league, Stonewall Sports League, which is 
it's not exclusive to LGBTQ, but it's very LGBTQ okay. welcoming. They want to have a kickball uh, wow. session that they're going to do the week before. Um, we have the Blue Ridge Pride pageant. It used to be called the Miss Blue Ridge Pride, but we got rid of the gender label mm -hmm. uh, and opened it up to everyone, and it's the Blue Ridge Pride pageant. That will come two weeks before. Wow. Uh, so you have a lot. You, you're putting on this huge event. I mean, it's, it's really, really big. It's, who's, who's helping you with so, all this? Um, oh, I've got a huge team. Yeah. Uh, and I should, I have the true confession, the first festival I've ever been to was three years ago here in Asheville, and now I'm running them. Wow. And, uh, that's, that's, yeah. amazing. that's amazing. So I bring, I have lots of computer and management skills, mm -hmm. but the team is the one, they're the ones who are picking the talent for right. the entertainment. They're the ones who reach out to all of our incredible sponsors, mm -hmm. all the vendors. Uh, all volunteer. Every every single person in Blue Ridge Pride is 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 a volunteer. Nice. Um, we have no paid staff. I'm so excited about Blue Ridge Pride because the way that I learned about Blue Ridge Pride was actually you sent me an email and said, "Hey, we have these equity spots. Really want Aisha Adams Media out here. I really didn't have anything to sell, but like when people say I'm going to give you a table, you just go out there. So I got really cute. We went out there. Um, and this year, super excited about being out there with my team and having a couple things out there. So this is, even though it's called Blue Ridge Pride, it feels more about inclusivity of everybody and making sure that like everybody has space and place mm -hmm. um, so we can be all one big community. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. speaking for me personally, um, as a 501, as a nonprofit, I need to stay loyal to the base, which is our LGBTQ and allied group. But but to me, the festival is bringing people together and the procession very definitively, we make it a point that is not an LGBTQ procession, that is diversity, equity, and inclusion procession for mm -hmm. all of Asheville, right. mm -hmm. uh, which we, we just need a lot more of. And we talk about diversity, equity and inclusion, and we definitely a lot, oftentimes talk about African-American people and Hispanic people, but like, I'm always like, wait a minute, because I need my trans brothers and sisters to get some love. Mm -hmm. I always need my LGBTQ brothers and sisters to get some love. Mm -hmm. And so we can't have a conversation about diversity, equity, inclusion, and not talk about transgender population, mm -hmm. LGBTQIA. Mm -hmm. It's important. Everybody deserves to be included. That's what makes communities great. Right. Yeah, and, and even within Asheville, we're a microcosm of the rest of the country where people of color in our community are, I'm generalizing, far worse off right. than the rest of the people mm -hmm. in our community. And it's, it's a real problem, and there's a lot of separation. And one of our challenges is, my challenges is to think about how do we bring everyone together under um, under one roof. And it started out with, okay, when I first moved here, uh, the, the the fellow who runs GayAshevilleNC.com, his name's Jerry, and he took me under his arm. He said, Tina, let me tell you about Asheville. He said. Uh, Unlike most other cities in the LGBTQ community, the women own this city, mm -hmm. and and I just laughed. But it's what it's interesting. They're they're like the lesbians in the mountains. They're they're a bunch of lesbian groups. They're a bunch of men's groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're a bunch of queer groups. There are all these. They're um, LGBTQ Jews, that, and they're all separate. And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do at Blue Ridge Pride is we, we feel our unique role in the community is to be that kind of common watering hole and to mm -hmm. create a place that feels welcoming and, and inclusive inclusive to everyone. Um, that can be a challenge when you're picking music and musicians, right. for example. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, but we try. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, if you ever want a hip hop artist, I have recommendations. Oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also know some amazing DJs too, like in this community, where in the music, um, industry, we're always surrounded by amazing musicians and DJs, and I feel like DJs are so, um, it's a neutral space because they can play whatever you need them to, so you yeah. just reach out. We, yeah. we know uh, You've just been drafted to our entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so how, or what makes you so passionate about Blue Ridge Pride? Why is this important to you? Do you are you LGBTQIA? Like, what is it about you that said, this is going to be the work that I do and I bring to Asheville? I 
when people talk about transgender, um, mm -hmm. they focus on the gender. Mm -hmm. um, and I spent 55 years living in the wrong gender. And I, in truth, I don't care what my gender is. I really don't. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you live with the secret that runs that deep, you, you're walled off from the world by, like, like you're living behind plexiglass. Mm -hmm. So my mother would say, I love you, but she's talking to someone she doesn't. They, my parents didn't know until six years ago mm -hmm. uh, about me. Uh, my children you know, thought I was a wonderful father, but they said, you know, they remarked afterwards that you always seemed a little distant, and it's because you're, you're constantly translating before I say something to you. I have to say, wait a minute, how would Tom say this? Um, and so the, the most wonderful part has been just for the first time in my life, I feel connected to people. Um, I feel I can have uh, a connection to God that I could never have. I used mm. to think that he wasn't answering my prayers. And I, I learned later on that it's to have a conversation, you have to have two people in the same room. And mm. I wasn't there. Mm. I wasn't bringing myself. Mm. And so I, I just learned to hold identity just absolutely sacred that uh, whether you're talking about gender, race, religion, that the world is so much richer when we share yeah. those identities with each other and mm -hmm. not just in our own uh, our own community mm -hmm. uh, and i I just feel the both the personal urge to to reach out and you know i 'm here yeah. <laughs> but 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 to make sure other people have that Absolutely. and um, not just between the LGBTQ community and the rest of the world, I actually feel my community, the LGBTQ community, is just as guilty of insulating itself at times, turning inward and of judging everyone else mm -hmm. by its own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I think that we, we need uh, just more common space to, to come together. And Pride definitely does that. Mm -hmm. It does. Oh, it does. Last year was magical to me. I, I went up once in a while, I'd run up on stage and just look out there and then I'd have to run back and do my duties. But, and I just looked out and it was just, everyone seemed so relaxed and at ease and they didn't all look alike. They all were so different. And, and that was just cool to see everyone just that relaxed. Mm. That's beautiful. It is. Yeah, I definitely think one of the biggest things that I've experienced in the um, LGBTQ community is the very separate part of African-American LGBTQ from the Caucasian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that's a barrier I want to break because we have things on the apps or the shirts that say, what does they say? It says no, no blacks, no femmes, no fats. And that alone is just self-segregating yourself Absolutely. from three groups of people. Yeah that have done nothing to you. And so I think that it's something in the gay community that isn't talked about enough, but I, I would love to see the gay community actually stand up for each other mm -hmm. and not attack each other, because we're all stronger together. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that I've been facing, and I, I was so glad that you took us up last year, we actually never sell out of that allotment that, that, I, that, that we put in place a couple of years ago. Um, for minority communities um, and entrepreneurs. And, and some people said, well, Tina, look, why would I want to come to your festival? You know, the, the music is white, or you, you don't have people doing braiding hair, or, or things that I would want at my festival. Mm -hmm. And so we, we tried to reach out on, on, on that. But it's, I've learned that it's going to take many years to sort of build that trust. Mm. It's right. not going to be, oh, we've got a program. Come <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing, there's no priority higher for me than to bridge that, that gap. Um, and I welcome anyone with thoughts on, the, another problem we have with income issues, we're all volunteer. Well, who can afford to volunteer? True. People like me who have built up a lifetime of equity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that creates bias. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out ways around that.
It's really well, it's fun. a very inclusive festival. I had a lot of fun, um, and I can't wait to be there this year. Good. And super excited about excited. just being there to support my LGBTQIA fans and <laughs> friends and to do whatever Kirby wants to do because it's really all about Kirby. <laughs> I was like, Kirby, Kirby, you're in charge, and you just tell me and Miriam what you want us to do. Yes, what do you want us to wear? How do you want us to move? What kind well, of, yeah, whatever you, you just want. tell us, you call us. <laughs> right. Kirby's party. Oh, you could have fun with this. Oh, I know. <laughs> we sure can. So what, um, what, what can we do, like me as a high school teacher, I already counsel a lot of um, ally groups, and my kids know that I'm a safe space to come to and talk to, and it's very inclusive, and I would love for um, organizations like yours and just, just people to come in and talk to them and just offer um, a listening area where they can come to you with um, issues or help or a lot of them get kicked out of their homes and mm -hmm. just things like that like where is there a hotline they can call is there a, a, a person to go to because we can do so much in the classroom you can do so much after school but where do they go to find those resources and find people that can help them so you just call attention to my one failing or one of my failings the the one of the things that we want to launch, and I wanted to launch at the beginning of the summer, we're now aiming for September 1, is a virtual LGBTQ center for Western North Carolina. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. wow. That's and amazing. It's, we looked around at LGBTQ centers all over the country and realized that most of them, we looked at 185, and almost all of them are brick and mortar based, and their web supports use of the center. Mm -hmm. And we said, what if that doesn't help a rural community that might help Asheville? What if we started from scratch and built a virtual center that was only virtual mm -hmm. and that partnered with all the other groups that are doing incredible stuff? And, and so what we, we've designed it, but now we're cleaning it up to make it more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And think of it has two components. One are these, I'll call them directories. So um, welcoming organizations that could be corporations. We've got welcoming communities of faith. There are like 60 that we've identified so far. Uh, welcoming schools, um, welcoming restaurants, mm -hmm. but then we've got welcoming uh, a, a database of welcoming groups. So whether it's uh, an art group, a uh, performing group, a sports team, uh, you could look there. We've got w a database of welcoming speakers. Mm -hmm. and we, so we want local speakers who speak on and, and it. And again, for me, while I, I'm centered on LGBTQ, I'd like this to be seen as something to address race and right. other um, religion, mm -hmm. uh, but so you could go there for that. Welcoming uh, seminars, you, you kind of catch a little, welcoming is kind of, mm -hmm. um, uh, but um, so these databases, and then we're, picture those now, these pages, uh, so welcoming communities of faith, welcoming schools, welcoming sports, welcoming neighborhoods, and in each of those, you could go there and find who are the speakers who could talk about faith, uh, wow. in, in this context, wow. where could I find groups in communities of faith? Mm -hmm. And what we're, what we're trying to do is we're building the engine and then it would be maintained by the community. Mm. And it's tagged for our community so that someone could say, I'm a young queer person in Clay County who, and I need help, I need some advice on name change. Mm -hmm. Where could I find that? And so that's the vision is to, is to have one place to, to find that's all that. that. So my question so for you is, you, you said your parents recently found out over the last six years about your transition. When you were going through all of this, like where were the resources? How did you get help? What was your, your process like? Yeah, uh, it, was, it was terrifying. Okay. Um, I was a corporate executive, uh, married, 15 years at the time, something like that. Um, and I thought I was going to lose my family. I've been so closeted. My wife was the only one who knew, and we both, she'd always been sympathetic, but we both always thought victory was, I'm going to conquer gender. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna man up. And I spent 55 years trying to mm -hmm. man up. Uh, and it wasn't until I became I never attempted suicide, but I ideated it. 
very seriously. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, that's, I know that that's not the right solution. Yeah. How do I make sure I never go there again? And I realized that I had to redefine victory from conquering gender to accepting a gender that I still didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And I turned to the, uh, I use the internet a lot. Uh, human rights campaign was actually um, very instrumental. Um, I was in, living in New York City. Uh, I actually went to an, a local LGBTQ center and, and now on, um, I was talking to someone about uh, in the audience, what show were we talking about? Um, it, it's on TV right now with, with all the, um, not, it's not pride, but it's, it's one word. Pose. Pose, thank you. Um, and I actually, I came, or I came out or explored my gender with some of the people who are now acting on Pose. Oh, wow. It's so wow. wild for me to see them. It's so <laughs> wild. Wow, amazing. But uh, 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 no, I think we need even more resources. And they need, we, we now have plenty on the internet. I think it's now people need people like yourself mm -hmm. who are modeling acceptance right. um, in all directions, not pushing them towards your own gendered solution. Mm -hmm. but, figuring out who they are. Mm -hmm. As a married woman, what stuck out to me is you're like, my wife went through this with me and you're still married today. We are 22 years as wow. of two days ago. 20, wow. I'm 21 years, 22 years Hey, don't together. get in trouble now. 